Hi, my name is Adam Rex and I'm talking to you from my TV room here in Tucson, Arizona, where I live. Behind me is a neon picture of the creature from the Black Lagoon dressed up as a cowboy. And today I'm going to read to you my book with Lori Keller called Pluto Gets the Call. When I was your age, everybody agreed that there were nine planets in our solar system. Nine planets. Now you probably know that there's eight now, but when I was your age, the list of planets from closest to the sun to farthest away went Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto. Pluto was the ninth planet from the sun. But then in 2006, a bunch of scientists got together and decided that Pluto shouldn't be called a planet anymore. And that's what this book is about. I wrote the story for this, but Lori Keller actually, she made the pictures, but she also wrote some little extra words that she put here and there. And she started the story right here on the cover. It says, oh, is someone going to call? Are they calling to invite me to a party? I love parties. So the book starts with a big look at the whole solar system, the giant sun, and there's Jupiter and Saturn up there. You can barely see the Earth. The Earth is really small, but way over in the corner, just a tiny speck is Pluto. Pluto says, hi, hi, over here behind the ice and all those other guys. It's me, Pluto, the ninth planet. It is great to see you. You don't get a lot of visitors out here in the Kuiper Belt. Now here's the Kuiper Belt. Pluto's going to tell us about that, but look at all the, the things floating around in the Kuiper Belt. It's this huge ring around the sun that's full of frozen stuff. It's kind of my neighborhood. No big deal. Not to brag, but I'm mostly made of, of nitrogen. I'm almost as big as Earth's moon. I'm really cold. And I have a big heart on my belly because I love being a planet. Oh, and then Pluto's phone rings. Hold, hold on a second, that's my phone. You got Pluto. Oh, what a coincidence. I was just talking to someone from Earth. Sorry, I should take this. Just listen to what they're saying. Saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm, what? What do you mean I'm not a planet anymore? Why am I not a planet anymore? I, oh, okay. Thank you for calling. And you can see Pluto does have sort of a heart shape on his belly and now that heart is breaking. He tries to put a brave face on it. He tells us that was just some scientists from Earth. They say, I'm not a planet anymore, no biggie. They asked if I'd like to be known as the solar system's largest ice dwarf. And I was like, how'd you like to be known as Earth's meanest jerks, huh? Huh? I didn't really say that. I'm sorry, says Pluto. You were probably hoping to hang out with a real planet. Let me show you around. Oh, Pluto takes us to meet Neptune. Psst, Neptune, are you awake? Neptune says, Muh. This is Neptune. He's closer to the sun than me, but he's still so far away that it takes him 165 years to orbit all the way around. It only takes Earth one year. One year exactly. That's what an, a year is, actually. Who are you talking to? No one, man. Go back to sleep. Neptune is pretty icy and gassy. I'm not being mean. He just is. His twin is called Uranus. They're practically the same size. Hey, Pluto. Uranus is icy, too. In fact, she and Neptune are called ice giants, which is which is why they want to call me an ice dwarf, I guess. And Uranus says, what's up, Pluto? I know you have kind of a funky orbit, but I don't usually see you this close to the sun. Pluto says, these Earth scientists say I'm not a planet anymore. Uranus cannot believe that. Uranus says, what? Hold on, says Pluto. There's my phone. Oh, look. It's the scientists again. 
What do you want? No, as a matter of fact, I don't want to be called a plutoid. Would you like to be called a humanoid? Sheesh, hanging up. I gotta go, Uranus. Stay frosty. Next up are Saturn and Jupiter. They're gas giants. Again, I am not making these names up. Hi, Pluto. Hi, yourself. Saturn has amazing rings. Saturn says, oh, stop. They look like solid bands from far away, but really they're made up of little bits of ice and rock and dust. And Saturn is so happy for this attention. She says, oh, stop, stop, stop. And then she gives Pluto a big hug. And Pluto says, uh, hey, look over there. It's Jupiter. And Jupiter says, stop looking at me. He's a big ball of gas. Jupiter says, you're a big ball of gas. But Pluto says, I'm not, though. I'm little, and I have a hard surface you can stand on. But Saturn and Jupiter don't. If you tried to stand on Jupiter, you just fall right through him. Saturn says, you know, Jupiter, he's really stormy. That great red spot is a storm. It's bigger than Earth, and it's been there for as long as I can remember. Jupiter shouts at them, I'm bigger than all you planets put together. Pluto says, uh, I should go. Bye, Pluto. Call me. Pluto's getting closer and closer to the sun, and now he's moving through kind of a crowded area. He says, Jace, there's a lot of garbage between Jupiter and Mars. But then one of those pieces of garbage says, oh, nice. It's Pluto calling us garbage. Some more little bits of it say, we're not garbage. We're bits of rocks and called asteroids and comets. Together, we're called the asteroid belt. Pluto doesn't feel right about calling them garbage. He says, I'm sorry, gosh, I'm sorry. And one of these little guys says, just because he's a planet, he thinks he's better than us. And another little bit says, what about Ceres? He's pretty big. He orbits around the sun. He's round like a planet. And actually, that's Ceres right there. Look, Ceres is round like a planet. Ceres is almost as big as Pluto. And Ceres says, yeah, that's right. How come you're a planet and I'm not? And Pluto says, I'm actually not a planet anymore. Ceres says, he's not a planet anymore? Ha <laughs> ha! He's not a planet anymore! And all of them are laughing at Pluto. Pluto runs off. He says, I don't have to take this. I am out of here. Pluto says, um, so here's Mars. She's smaller than Earth, and she has a lot of water ice. This little guy says, I don't see any water ice. Oh, it's under her surface. It's part ice, water, dust, and small rocks. And then this comet says, that's exactly what I put in my smoothies. That's my favorite line in the whole book. That, that, that line about the smoothies. Which is too bad because Lori Keller wrote it. Pluto says, she's called the red planet because all of the rusty iron on her surface. Hi, Mars. And Mars, Mars says, I have robots on me. Pluto says, yeah? Some of them just sit there. Some of them roll around. Robots! The humans sent them here. And Pluto's all like, ugh. No offense, but I don't want to talk about humans right now. So he keeps going. He says, next is Earth. It's where mean scientists live. Moving on. Earth is all like, oh, come on. Pluto's made it all the way to Venus and Mercury. Pluto has traveled over 3.5 billion miles. And Pluto says, Venus and Mercury are really hot. And Mercury says, you're not so bad yourself. Venus is the hottest planet. And she's hidden behind yellow acid clouds. Acid clouds. Clouds made out of acid. Can you imagine that? Venus says, 
You'd hide your face, too, if it was covered in volcanoes. Mercury's hot, too, says Pluto, but he's also cold. If you were standing on Mercury in the sun, you'd burn up. But if you stood in the shade, you'd freeze. Tina says, hey, Pluto, are you okay? Oh, I'm just kind of down because I'm not a planet anymore. Not a planet? But you're round. Yeah. You orbit the sun. You don't orbit another planet like a moon does. Yeah, says Pluto, but I live in a crowded neighborhood. I guess a real planet's supposed to sweep all of the ice and rocks out of the way. Venus says, hey, why don't you go talk to the boss about this? Yeah, says Mercury. Go, t go ask the sun's advice. She's pretty bright. Pluto says, maybe I will. Did you get what I said? Pretty bright? Because she's the sun. Pluto says, yeah, no, I got it. Pluto has made it all the way to the sun. Look at that. Look at that gigantic sun. So big that Lori Keller could not even fit it on the page. And way down here is Pluto. The sun says, Pluto, you're far from home. Did you hear what happened to me? The sun says, Pluto, you were orbiting around me for billions of years before the word planet was even invented. Pluto says, oh, I know. I just liked feeling special for a while. Look out at the solar system, my friend. Mercury is the smallest, and dare I say the cutest. Venus is the hottest and I rotate it in the opposite direction and as, as most everyone else. Earth has life, and there's yummy sandwich. Mars has robots. I guess they're kind of cool. Jupiter's the biggest. Stop staring at my red spot. Saturn has its rings. Yoo-hoo, hi Pluto. People talk about Uranus for reasons I don't really want to get into. Ah, oh, shucks, you must mean my charming personality. And, well, Neptune is Neptune. Neptune says, what's that supposed to mean? But you, Pluto, you're the planet who doesn't get to be a planet anymore. And people love you for it. You're still a planet to everyone who is too short to ride the Ferris wheel, to everyone who's ever put $7 into a claw machine and still didn't get the hippopotamus they wanted, to all the people picked last for kickball. Do you know that right now, as we speak, those scientists are still arguing about you? Pluto says, they are? You used to be the coldest, littlest planet, but now you have a big, warm place in our hearts. Pluto says, thanks, son. The sun says, don't mention it. I'd hug you, but, but you'd burn up instantly. It's cool. And then Mercury says, get it? Cool? They get it. And that's the end of the story. The back of the book has all kinds of information about our solar system. Some of it, this is exciting, some of it isn't even right anymore. Because since we published this book, scientists have learned new things. They, we know, for example, that, that Jupiter and Saturn have more moons than, than this book says that they do. Because back when we made this book, we didn't know about those extra moons. Science is learning new things all the time. Sometimes it's stubborn, but science will always change its mind when it's time. And that's why it's strong. And it's waiting for kids like you to teach it something new. And that kind of message is close to my heart because my wife is a scientist. Uh, my wife is actually an astronomer. She's a special kind of an astronomer called an astrophysicist. And she used to make telescopes that looked out into space. And... She, she helped build a telescope that flew up to the very edge of space. And it, it flew up there to look not for planets, but for baby stars being born 10 billion light years away. That's why it was such a pleasure making this book. And that's why it was a pleasure reading it to you today. So I hope you'll keep reading. I hope you'll read a lot for the STEAM Race to Space Reading Challenge. And... I think that's just about all I have to say. Once again, my name is Adam Rex, and you can find me online at adamrex.com or on Twitter at, at Mr. Adam Rex. 
And so thank you so much for listening to me and bye-bye from Tucson.